Hi, right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the, today's Amita Care Live Your Life session. We have a great one today. It's all about homemade spa treatments that you can do at home, do it yourself. Uh, we all know during the hot summer months, sometimes we just need to uh, take a second and uh, unwind and recharge. And uh, we have Katie Bresick, um, that's going to show us today a couple of things that we can do at home to kind of recreate the spa at home. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to introduce Katie and Katie's going to take it take it away and show us a couple of things. But before we I kick it off, if you would like to um, try some of these spa treatments at home right now, you can. These are all simple ingredients you can find at your house and at the local, at the local market. All right, Katie, you can take it away. Awesome. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Um, if you would like, you can unmute yourself. You can turn your camera on, um, especially if you want to like do this together. It might be fun to kind of like actually see each other. That being said, you don't have to. Uh, the chat box is open, so I want to make this really fun and interactive. So please ask questions um, about anything that we're talking about today. Um, and if you make anything at home that you want to share with us, like please do. Um, it's always really fun to hear and see what everyone else is kind of doing to pamper themselves. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun today, hence why we were playing the spa music at the beginning. I actually brought my eye mask. I thought this could be like a fun thing to wear as well, um, especially when we're talking about bath salts and just relaxing at night and just kind of like taking a moment. Um, we're all so busy. We all have so much going on in our lives, and it's so important to take the time for self-care. And I know that's a word that gets like thrown out so much and like, what does self-care actually mean and look like? And honestly, it's just giving back to yourself, right? It's giving yourself a little bit of time, hopefully every day, whether it's five minutes, 20 minutes, where you're just doing something really nice for yourself. Um, I would love to go to the spa all day, right? I think all of us would, but that doesn't, self-care doesn't mean like going somewhere and like spending a whole day at the spa, even though sign me up, I'll, I'll join you. Uh, but it's just really filling your cup and really doing small, nice things for yourself um, that brings you joy. We all deserve that. And we all probably need a little extra self-care right now. So just kind of like throwing that out there, just really giving yourself permission to take care of yourself and to do really nice things for yourself. And hopefully some of the things that we do today, you can make at home. Um, I have all the recipes and directions here that we're going to go over and um, yeah, just kind of like bring a smile to your face. We'll also post these recipes in the chat. So this way later on, if you want to take them and try them out yourself, you can't do it right now. You can take the recipes with you and try it out later on. Awesome. And feel free to take uh, pictures too. If you're like, you have your phone with you, if you just want to like take photos of, of at something that you're like, oh, this is like, definitely want to do the bath bombs, whatever it is, like join us. Um, but just a quick intro, my name is Katie Bresak. Um, really honored to be here, just in case you're like, who is this person talking to me? Um, I've been in the health and wellness space for over 12 years now, um, something that I really love and enjoy, and I'm really honored to, to be here with you all today. And I wanted to kind of just like start by talking about like, why it's so important to think about our skin, right? Our skin is our largest organ of our body. And I, some, I feel like sometimes we don't really think of our skin as an organ. <laughs> because we see it, right? We think of organs inside, um, but our skin is the largest organ of our body and about 70 to 80% of what you actually put on your skin gets absorbed in your body. So just like what you, when you're thinking about what you're putting in your body, it's really also important to think about what you're putting on your body because everything is going to get absorbed. Um, so really think of, think of it that way too. Um, your skin not only is a protective layer, but it's also a natural detoxifier and it really works to support your inner organs. And I always say like your skin, right? The way you glow is a visible reflection of like what's going on inside your body too. And it's a really good indicator of overall health. Um, not to get TMI, but like your body, right? The only way it can actually eliminate, right? Bowel movements, sweat, or through your skin, through your pores. 
So just something to think about, especially these hot <laughs> summer months where you might be sweating more. It's actually great. Sweating is an amazing natural detoxifier as well, but it's going to come out some way. Um, and a lot of times if you're breaking out, I feel like they lied to us in junior high when they were like, when you get past the this puberty stage, like you won't be breaking out anymore. Adults break out forever, right? Like humans break out forever. <laughs> But it really can change based on what you're eating, what you put on your skin can actually really help with the health of your skin. Um, the elasticity, the collagen, the glow, all the things that we really want. Our, our faces are mirror to the world, right? So just kind of like sharing with that. And the reason why I want to talk about that is just as processed food contains maybe some artificial and natural flavors that might not be the best for you. The same is true for like mass produced synthetic skin products as well. Um, there's been a huge shift and change in like the skincare world in the past, I would say five years, but really in the past like two and a half, three years where like even like Clinique and all of that are like kind of getting on board versus it's not just like hippie stores. I was not just where like I'm shopping. <laughs> But a lot of the things that you might find at drugstores, department stores, not only contain ingredients that aren't really necessarily healthy for you, um, they might be causing your skin to be irritated. They might be causing your skin to be dry. Um, they might be causing allergic reactions in your body. And if you're feeling that way on the outside, right, and then you're absorbing what you're putting on your skin, it can also irritate the inside of your body too. So I think that's something to be really mindful about. And I love the website, the ewg.org. You can plug in any single product that is sold and it will give you a rating. So say you're using, um, like what, like, a trying to think of like a brand, like a cure. Um, it's one of it's a little bit more like holistic, natural skincare brand. You can plug it into this website and it will give you a rating and it will let you know why it's giving you a rating from one to 10 and whether it's healthy, not as healthy. And you can put anything in there, sunscreen, mascara, shampoo, everything. I check everything before I buy it through that website. Um, and it's an organization. So they're not really, they're not getting money. They might be getting some money, but it's not like skewed either way. It's like real facts. Um, so that's a really good website. If you're just starting to be curious about kind of healthier skincare products, especially in the summer with sunscreen and bug spray, it's a really good place to kind of like check some of those things out um, and get non-biased information on yes or no. Like, should I buy this? Should I not buy this? Um, so what I would say is you really want to try to choose products where you can like recognize what's in the product. Same that goes for what you're buying for food, right? Can you pronounce all the ingredients? Are there a hundred different ingredients for like a, a moisturizer for your skin? The less is more, but also what is in there is really important to be really mindful about. Um, really just like food, if you're trying to kind of be healthier, maybe look for like certified organic um, and the made safe EWG, EWG, Nature True, Eco Kurt, and then I just lost the last one, Cosmos will be on the label as well. And that will kind of like let you know if it's been kind of approved on terms of like a organic natural kind of skincare line. So the big thing that I want to say too is be really mindful of fragrance. They are calling fragrance the new secondhand smoke. Okay, so everything in the States pretty much that's sold with skincare has fragrance in it. Um, all the hand soaps, like all of that. So the thing that you want to look for instead is essential oils. So you can get soap that has lemon essential oil, but the synthetic fragrances are probably one of the most harmful things that are in a lot of like skincare products that um, we want to try to avoid as much as we possibly can. So I wanted to kind of give a quick little overview on that and like why we're kind of making more like at home different things that you can help with your skin. But uh, just like you're looking for maybe healthier food options, 
really read ingredients for everything that you're putting on or in your body. That goes for your toothpaste <laughs> all the way down to your nail polish. Uh, any questions on any of this? And had, has anybody looked at the EWG.org before to kind of check things out? It's a really, really great, easy site that you can just plug everything in um, and find, find that rating. It's, it's a really good resource to check out. All right, so because I'm a nutritionist, I can't talk about skin without talking about food, my favorite subject. Um, so when we think about what we are putting um, on or in our body, right, we really want to think about a lot of the skincare products have a lot of the minerals and vitamins that our body actually wants to eat as well. So when you look at vitamin E, for example, right, vitamin E is really great for scarring. Um, so it's something that you can eat that will also help your body, but something that you can also topically put on your body too. But antioxidants are one of the best things that you can eat to actually help with your skin, help reduce inflammation, even out your skin tone, prevent acne breakouts, possibly even reduce wrinkles, right? I'm like, I'm ready for that, right? <laughs> um, so if you think about antioxidants, right? Like you're kind of thinking about blueberries and raspberries and like the color of the rainbow in terms of food that you're eating, um, vitamins A, B3, C, like lots of citrus, strawberries, um, peppers, dark leafy greens are really important, vitamin E. Um, so I kind of put together like all the antioxidants and like the food that I would like you to think more about eating, but think like lots of carrots and sweet potatoes, Avocados, lots of really good healthy fat. Um, avocados are probably one of the best foods that you can eat for healthy skin, um, healthy glowing skin. Collagen, I feel like has been all in the rage in the past few years too. Uh, people are doing like collagen with their teas and bone broths, but it really is important because as we age, our body unfortunately produces less and less collagen and collagen is what keeps our skin that elasticity of our skin. So collagen is really found in bones. You know, it's a little, a little gross if you kind of think about it, uh, <laughs> but bones of meat. So like our great, great grandmothers or grandfathers, they would make like every culture has a stock like a chicken noodle type of stock, what they would do is that they would literally take the bones, put it with water and simmer it and letting all of the amazing nutrients from that. And then we would be drinking and, and kind of eating foods with a collagen. So collagen is actually like really key, really important, um, healthy kettle and fire has an amazing, um, bone broth brand. If you want to like have some bone broth and drink a little bit of it as an afternoon sip, full of nutrients, but really, really great for your skin. Lots of fish, think lots of like fatty fishes, like salmon, nuts, seeds, dark leafy greens. Dark leafy greens are pretty, are usually the number one thing missing in most of our diets. And the more that you have greens, that also helps with glowing skin, coconut oil, walnuts, olives, olive oil, pasteurized eggs, and don't forget to drink water. <laughs> Your body's mostly water. Um, so the more that if you want really glowing, healthy looking skin, you really want to really focus on drinking lots of water too. Awesome. <clears throat> any questions about any food to think about? You're like, ooh, it's like almost dinner time. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so something else I wanna talk to you about is um, some nine skin strategies. One, trying to eat less sugar and processed foods. Again, whatever you put in your body is gonna show up on your skin. Eliminate food sensitivities. If you're breaking out from different foods that you might be eating or different products, like do a little experiment, maybe take things out. And I would say the number one thing that I see causing a lot of like um, inflammation and breakouts is dairy. Um, so look, I know everyone's like, oh, bummer. Look for, uh, hormone free, antibiotic free, organic dairy. Um, or there's actually, it's kind of really interesting. There's two different types of dairy cows. 
Um, there are ones that are in Ireland and New Zealand that are protein casing two. And for whatever reason, it's much easier for humans to digest the dairy from those dairy cows. So you could like buy cheese from New Zealand or Ireland instead. The dairy cows in the US and Europe have protein casing one, and that's usually harder for humans to break down and we have more breakouts from that. And then uh, goat's dairy tends to not cause as many breakouts. So if you are breaking out a lot and you're doing lots of dairy, that might be something you wanna remove just for a short period of time, just to see if that's causing some skin issues. The, three thing, the third thing is your gut. Um, if you're not having regular bowel movements, if you're feeling gassy and bloaty a lot, um, it will kind of like show up on your face as well. So the healthier your gut is, the healthier your skin will look too. Eating lots of omega-3 rich foods, like lots of fatty fishes, really trying to get, eating that color of the rainbow, eating lots of different fruits and vegetables, you get really good nutrients in your body move your body sweating and exercising is a great way to help your skin too. sleep. Um, sleep is super important. I feel like most of us are not getting enough sleep. Um, so if you're questioning whether or not you're getting enough sleep, you're probably not. <laughs> so go to bed earlier, get your Z's, your skin will appreciate it. Really focus on reducing stress as much as you possibly can. We were talking about this at the beginning, doing some meditations and some deep breathing, maybe listening to spa music. Um, whatever you can do to help reduce stress is gonna help with your skin. And really be careful with skin products and really be mindful of what you're putting in your body. Um, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today is making some quick and easy things at home that can really help reduce the amount of chemicals you put on your body. There's a study that says that most women, before they leave their house, put on over 700 different types of chemicals before they even leave the house between makeups, makeup and shampoos and lotions and, and different things like that. I don't know the equivalent to males, but that was just a study that I read and I was like shocked. But then I started thinking about it. Like if you're putting on blush, blush usually has like 30 different ingredients in there, depending on what product it is. Right. So it could, it could happen. Um, so just really being mindful again, about what you're putting, um, on your skin. It's not to scare you at all. It's just, I think it's really important to really have all the information and really being mindful about, about that. Because I think when we think about our health, it's mostly food. We don't really necessarily connect the dots sometimes between, um, what we're putting on our skin too. Awesome. I'm like leaning forward. I'm like in my kitchen. I don't have a chair here. So uh, any questions on, on any of any of that or anything that you've all observed with your skin when maybe like trying new and different products or new things or food sensitivities? I would say the first one's dairy. The second one is gluten. That shows the most in your skin. So if it's not the dairy... I know what's, what affects me the most is a, a lot of it is the fragrance. The fragrance used to mess me up, especially with like the soaps. Yeah, that, yeah. that used to mess me up. Bad. I would, I get really bad headaches now. Like if I go somewhere and like there's lots of cologne and perfume, I like get really bad headaches because I don't use that stuff anymore. And I used to like spray me, spray everything down. I would spray my clothes, like all of it. <laughs> God, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And I know um, a lot of people tend to use like fabric softeners and stuff like that for their clothes. And I know so sometimes that can, that can um, kind of leave you messed up too with uh, breakouts on your skin, if you, especially yeah. if you're really sensitive to, to the fragrance. Definitely. And laundry detergent, like all of it, like all of it has fragrance. So I buy everything unscented, no fragrance. Um, I like the seventh generation. They have really good laundry detergent. The, un the un um, scented one is good. Yeah. I believe of me, it's the seasons. Like when it gets really cold, my skin dry, it gets dry. Like it looks like eczema, but it's not eczema on my legs. But when it's just starting getting warm, it go back to normal. And I use a lot of vitamin E oil. Yeah, vitamin E is great for that. And do you exfoliate a lot? Because that's really good too. Yes, yes. 
I'm not awesome. I'm recently using coffee grinds and stuff. I have order a, a jar from Amazon. It's really good. And you do it at least twice a week. Awesome. Yeah. All the exfoliation. I like that coffee grinds. Does it do you smell like coffee after? <laughs> yeah, but I'm home. <laughs> 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 No, I love it. A lot of my husband loves coffee, so I feel like he would love to smell like coffee. <laughs> I love Starbucks, so I'm like, I, I feel like I'm in Starbucks all day long after I take a <laughs> I love it. Yeah, um, and then um, shea butter is really good, too, for, like, really dry skin. Yeah, I love shea butter in the winter. Yeah, you're right, though. Like, the seasons can definitely, I feel like there's always, like, two weeks like as you're transitioning to winter and then as you're transitioning to summer where you I noticed like a lot of and then I'm like okay Katie you gotta like remember to exfoliate and yeah. moisturize yeah, yeah. coconut and oil is a great moisturizer usually more in the summer but shea butter is much better like in the cold winter yeah, yeah. because um I know when during the winter time if I take hot showers that tends to dry me out very bad it, the hot showers, that hot water strips all your oil. Oh, cool. I don't know what happened. My my PowerPoint went away. Keep talking. I don't know what happened. No, but I during the winter time, the hot water, well. yeah, it, when you're trying to warm up and you, mm -hmm. you want to take a hot shower, but it's not really the best yeah. because it, it strips you of all that like essential oil that your body produces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's make some fun products together. Oh. Um, we're going to start if everybody's at, if anyone's at home and wants to do this with me, if you want to like take a minute and just go grab what you, what you're doing. So we're going to do a toner first and toner is great for when you are taking your makeup off at night. Um, or if you've been walking around all day and you just feel like kind of grimy I just feel like just being outside the wind's blowing right things are just getting on your face um toner is great so wash your face I usually wash my face and then kind of do it but you can kind of you can do the toner first and wash your face it, it just depends on kind of what you like the most but we're going to do an apple cider vinegar toner so apple cider is also really good for digestion I don't know if, it, if anybody ever uses apple cider vinegar for digestion I do that every morning the apple cider vinegar and water and take it as a you shot take a shot yeah mm -hmm. my mother okay. did there. are you it's really it's really good for getting your digestion flowing and moving and it's really yeah. awesome um so it's interesting right because it's like what I mentioned before what you're putting on your face and what you're putting in your body sometimes are the same thing right so this is this is kind of a magical tool um so we're going to get your apple cider vinegar, water, rose water, which is such a beautiful smell. Like I actually wear this um, as like a perfume, I guess. Uh, I love the smell of rose water. And then I'm going to use <coughs> lavender essential oils. So I got the rose water. There's this really cool hippy dippy store down the street from me. Um, and they sell essential oils and uh, like rose, rose water too. But you could get like a rose essential oil and water, um, filtered water, and just get a spray bottle and you can make your own at home too. It's super, super easy. Um, so what I, what I want to preface this by saying is when you're getting the water, you want to make sure that it's like filtered water, right? Um, depending on where you live, like I, I live in LA, the water isn't that great. Um, so if I'm going to put something in my body or on my body, um, I'm going to get some of the filtered water that we have. So I love Mason jars, great investment, super easy. I have the large sizes and then I have the small. So I'll probably, I'm going to make it in here and I'll probably transfer it in here to keep because it's a little bit smaller to store. So I'm going to get the water going. So I'm going to, this is eight ounces right here. So I'm going to fill it up with eight ounces, but for everyone at home that wants to join along, go grab all the things. And I'm going to go fill this with water. I'll be right back. And then you can ask me questions. I'm not going far. If you want to talk. <laughs> Katie, so you, it says recommended lavender or chamomile. Can you do any other essential oils besides those or? Totally. Yeah. 
I just find that the they they kind of go the best with the apple cider vinegar because it's such a strong smell, you know. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so then we're gonna do our apple cider vinegar, and just gonna pour it into the mason jar. Okay, so I'm gonna level it out. Let's see here, so you can like see a little bit better. And the thing with the apple cider, you want to shake it first because it has the mother in it, and it can. Uh, yeah, it drops to, to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you don't really want to get the mother <laughs> in your skin toner. And every bottle is different, but you know, it just helps to shake it up. All right, and then I'm gonna do oops, the rose water. Yeah, rose water is one of the best smells. I feel like rose is just such a clean smell. And then I'm gonna put that in here. And then I'm gonna do my essential oils. And to be honest with you, I usually do more than two to three drops because <laughs> I like to kind of overpower that, that smell. So if you're wondering why I'm gonna do more. I just like really nice, smelly things. <laughs> Especially with the apple cider vinegar. <laughs> yes. Because exactly. my partner hates the smell of apple cider vinegar. Drives yeah. <laughs> right. And then I'm just going to take a spoon and just like shake it up. I just can't find the cover. If I had my cover of the mason jar, I would shake it that way. I just don't know where I left it. Oh, it smells really good, actually. I can just smell the lavender. So that means I put enough, enough in there. Um, all right, and then what you're going to do is you're gonna take a cotton ball, right? And you're gonna dab it. So the thing is, before you put anything on your face, you always wanna try it on your skin. So I put it like on your hand or like by your wrist. If you, if it's irritating at all, like anywhere in your body, you do not want to put this on your face, right? So everything that we're making today that you're going to put on your face, try it on your hands or your arms first. If there's um, any sort of like irritation, then it's just not right for you. And that goes with any new product that you're going to try, whether you make it or if you buy it, you always really want to make sure that you're trying it out yourself first. Okay. So I'm gonna transfer this to my other mason jar and I'll store it in the fridge. This makes about two of the small mason jars. And then you're gonna dip the cotton ball in, right? And then you can put it on your skin. I've done this many times, so I know it's not irritating, but when you're doing the toner, right? You really wanna go on your neck up and down, really thinking about places you might not wash, a, like you wash your face, you wash your neck, but like, are you really kind of getting in there? And it will get all of the dirt and grime. I have like sunscreen on right now. So like you can see like a little sunscreen, um, really do the back of your ears all over your face. Um, and then wash your face, put your moisturizer on, but um, it's a great way to really get some of that dirt and grime that like a lot of the face washes won't really get into. So I usually wet my face first, then I put the toner on, then I will wash my face again and then put on some like lotions and different things before I go to bed at night. Awesome. Can you do this in the morning too when you wake up? You could um, probably, I don't know if it's as needed like in the morning, but you definitely could. Like, I think it just depends on like your skin and like how you feel. Um, it just, it feels really like, I feel like when you wash your face, like you feel clean, but I feel like the toner really gets a lot of like that dirt and grime, especially in the summer, especially if you're, I wear sunscreen every day, like, you know, just really trying. And I feel like a lot of the, when I wash my face, it doesn't really get I still can sometimes feel the residue. Does anyone else feel that after they wash their face sometimes? So the toner is just a really good way to deeply kind of get in there and, and do that. Um, so this makes two sizes of this, the small mason jar. 
I can't remember how many ounces this is. I think this is, this is four ounces, the small mason jar. So it will make two of the four ounces. And then I usually, it says store at room temperature, but it, since I have two, I'll keep one in the fridge and then one in my bathroom. Oh, that must also feel good too. Like, <laughs> Uh, when you have it in the fridge and putting it on. Yeah, it's like cooling nice and effect. cooling. Yeah, especially for the summer. So again, before you try it yourself, make sure you test it on your hand or your arm. Just make sure that you're not going to like have any like irritation to it. Any questions on toner or anything that we just did? And to be honest with you, it doesn't smell like apple cider vinegar because put the rose water mm. in, I put the lavender in. Um, and again, you could do any sort of um, essential oil that you like. I just really love the smell of lavender. I feel like it's very calming after a long day. Um, and then when I sleep, I really like the smell of lavender on myself too. So it kind of, you know, you'll still like smell it a little bit. Can you substitute the um, apple vinegar cider with rich hazel? This one, mm -hmm. I didn't do witch hazel. Okay. Yeah, um, you could do witch hazel though. That's a good, um, you could do that too. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't with this one, but you could for sure. Do you do witch hazel a lot? I do. Yeah. Witch hazel has a little hazel. bit of alcohol in it, right? Just, like Just a little. little. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um. I do love witch hazel. I find like I can't do it every day though. It, it irritates my skin, but I have very sensitive skin um, just because of the alcohol. But a lot of people use, use witch hazel every day and it's totally fine. So I think it just depends again, like on your skin and, and how your skin reacts to it. Just gonna rinse this out. Any other questions? Does this look like something that would be super easy to do at home? Yeah. How long does this usually, how long can that last for? And um, it's... It lasts for a while. Yeah, it doesn't really go bad. I just would say like you want to shake it before you use it because again, um, the apple cider vinegar, whether it's in the regular container or in there, it's going, it, it does have, um, I don't even know. It's like, it just... It's, it, it's like, set, like it goes to the bottom. It's, it like separates. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like kind of stringy looking sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like a weird, I don't know how to explain that, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds gross. It's not, um, it's great for you, but I, I always just shake it before I use it every single time. But I mean, toner can cost, I don't know, depending on which toner you're buying, it can be expensive. So that in itself I mean, yeah, all said and done, it's not, it's like a few dollars, right? Because a lot of us might already have, I think the only thing you might not have would be the rose water at home, but everything else you could probably have. Well, that's interesting because um, I have the, like one of those essential oil packs and it has like the rose in it, but I'm not a big fan of rose. But now I know that you can make rose water with just the essential oil in the water. It's pretty yeah, and rose water is actually really good on your face too. It's, it's, um, I don't know how to like the, I don't know where my words are today, but it's also like good for your face to like, you don't have to spray like it directly it. on, but yeah, it's like it kind of like softens. It's yeah. Like that's really what my sister uses as a, as an astringent. Um, I forgot the brand that they have in targets that she uses. Um, but she's always oh, telling me it's, it's really I know what good. You're talking about. It's, it's called Dr. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm is it Dr. Bronner's? Yes. Is it, yeah. all, is it Dr. Bronner's? I, I, I can't remember, but it's a popular Maybe. brand, though. It's, That's I the witch hazel I use. Oh, yeah, and it, and it has witch hazel, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, you, I mean, you could definitely, like, Google, like, rose water witch hazel toner, and there'll be a ton of different things. Yeah. Or, like, go on Pinterest. <laughs> There's lots of different things on there, but yeah, like I, rose water is great. Um, witch hazel, all of it. Like it's what I really love about where we might be right now in terms of like holistic, it's that we're really going back to the basics because we've overcomplicated everything, whether it's food or skincare. And 
all of the products you're like but this is probably what my grandmother would make because she lived in a farm growing up <laughs> you know oh, um, so it's something to like really think about um when we think about food and products you know it's kind of like going back to the basics any other questions before we make our salt scrub okay awesome all right, so now we're gonna make our salt scrub. So you can use sea salt, you can use um, kosher salt, whatever type of salt, you just wanna make sure it's like coarse, okay? So I'm going to put a cup of salt in here. Hold on. Has anyone ever made any um, salt scrub before? No. No. Mm -hmm. It sounds no. interesting because this is all stuff I have now. So, yes. So, gonna use my mason jar again. Put it's gonna be experimenting, Alex. As soon as you start seeing me with all that glowy skin, mm -hmm. you already know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, so olive oil. Um, you don't want to use a lot of olive oil, but olive oil is also really great for your skin. And if you think about it, eating a lot of olives and like healthy fats also really good for your skin too. Um, I wouldn't put olive oil just like directly on your skin like I would do with the coconut oil, but you can mix it with, with the sea salt to have like a really nice scrub because it's adding a lot of that like moisture and like, uh, Oh my God, my words today are not coming, but you all know what I mean, I hope. <laughs> so I'm going to put the, one fourth a cup of olive oil in Blame here. the heat, Katie. <laughs> yeah. And I have uh, two-year-old twins, so I was with them all morning before jumping on here, so I feel like my brain is... There we go. <laughs> well, it's, uh, not working. All right, and then, so again whatever your favorite essential oil is. So I love, has anyone heard of this brand? It's Sage, this essential oil brand. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. I love, it's called Liquid Sunshine and it's such a fun, it's like very citrusy. So I'm going to do that today because I already made the lavender with the toner, but um, first I want you to mix this up with the olive oil. You're going to see that it's changing color a little bit. It's totally normal and fine. If you have any like dried flowers at home, you could add that in too to like have it look a little bit prettier. And then I'm going to add about 10 to 20 drops of the essential oil. I like the smell of um, the tea tree one. I love tea tree. Do you really? Yeah, a lot of people don't like it, but I love it. I don't it. like it. But I'm I don't like it. it. Mm -hmm. It's too strong. And white tea. I love the smell of white tea. tea, tea nice. White tea. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I like, I like tea like, tree. When yeah. I smell it, I feel like it's working. <laughs> I like tea tree on my hair. Yeah, I use it, it for my scalp too. It's a tingle. Like, okay, it's working. I think. <laughs> well, tea tree is a great like antibacterial um it's great for cleaning too it's like a, one of the best things you can use for cleaning all right so this is what i'm going to use for like an exfoliator so i'm going to keep this in wait, let me go to the directions so the thing is you want to make sure you're keeping this in like a cool place um, i wouldn't especially if it's so hot out right you wouldn't want to leave it like out um, but if you put it under your um, sink in the bathroom, it could probably stay there. Um, but basically, you're going to scoop it out, rub it all over, use it as an exfoliator, and make sure you wash completely. Now, because we put oil in there, right, you want to be really, really mindful of the tub, okay, because it could get a little slick. You don't want to fall, all right? So just be mindful, but this goes for any sort of like scrub that you buy that has like any sort of oil in it. It can make your tub a little bit more slick. Mm. 
could slip a little bit. So just be really, really mindful. Um, so what I do is I just, after I do any sort of like sugar or salt scrub, I always just clean up the tub and make sure that it's not no one who comes in after me or if I forget and go next time that I just don't like slip and fall. Just and throwing it out. Rinse it with hot water. That's always to help. I had experience when years ago like that. First time using the scrub. Oh no, you fell? Almost. Oh no. All right, and then I'm gonna transfer it into here. God, yeah, it's scary, right? When you fall, when you're you need one of those um those mats. Like the handrails. Like the handrails hand or the mats. The mat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know with the boys' bathroom we have one of those mats um so they don't fall. Yeah, but you have to clean you have to clean those things very often though. Yes, you don't need yeah. some to clean them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so then this fits in my small little mason jar and then I, it's easy for storage. So the thing is, um, I love these, these size mason jars. Um, they're great for storing any, anything that we're making today um, rather than like the big ones because you know if you're trying to store, right? I don't know about you all, but I don't have that much room. So it's better to kind of have the smaller one. All right. So you want to exfoliate more than once a week, okay? <laughs> Depending on your skin, if you have very sensitive skin, maybe just twice a week, but you don't want, you want to exfoliate at more than once a week, definitely. Especially um, winter and summer, like we're, we always, the first layer of our skin is usually dead skin, right? So we want to like get that off um, for it to have some more of the glowing skin. I'm just going to rinse this so I can use this again. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, what well, I was going to say, can you use anything else besides uh, olive oil? Is there any other oils like avocado oil or anything? Yeah, you, can just, you can use avocado oil. Um, we're going to do a sugar scrub right now and we're going to use coconut oil. So you could use coconut oil too. Um, they're all great. I think it just depends on like your preference, um, but they're they're all they they shouldn't irritate your skin because um, they're very light. Definitely don't use any like sort of vegetable oils though. Like I wouldn't use any canola oil or anything like that. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna do our sugar scrub. This is one of my favorites. Um, I, I just like sugar. I like the texture of sugar a little bit more on my skin than I do salt, but whatever you like is totally fine. So we're gonna do, let me just rinse this out. The oil out of my. And um, with the sugar, um, can it, what's better? It, like raw sugar, regular white sugar? So you wanna really get sugar with texture. Okay. Okay, so definitely not like powdered sugar, like any sort of like the raw sugar would be fine. It's just you want to make sure that it has a texture to help with the exfoliation. Okay. So I'm just using that this sugar. Yeah. But the, the it's just because it's what powdered in my sugar. cabinet. Yeah. But you could use any. So one fourth half. Bring it in the middle. You can also use a mixing bowl too. And then, so you can put the vitamin E. So vitamin E is really great for scarring. So if you have any sort of scarring, um, you, we say you have a pimple and you, you know, you're messing with it and then you feel like it's scarring, you can actually put vitamin E directly on that area. Um, you'll need to do it for a while, but it can help with scarring. But um, so I just put a little bit of vitamin E in here and then I'm gonna add in some coconut oil. So depending on where you live, your coconut oil might be liquid right now or it might be solid. <laughs> I, I feel like mine liquid. is like, <laughs> mine's like in between. Um, it's definitely, 
not as hard like it is in the winter but it's definitely not like completely liquid but it's nice and soft right now if you're doing this in the winter and your coconut oil is hard you can just put it like in the microwave for like 10 15 seconds i'm gonna put the coconut oil in here Let's see and then again your favorite to oil whatever that kind of looks like for you this one i what am i going to do i think i'm going to go back to the lavender put my lavender in but if you have one of those kits right at home where you have lots of different essential oils like you could put in a different one each time that you you do this and then again you're going to mix it all up Again, if you have dried flowers, you can add dried flowers to this. I really smell the coconut in this one because it's like so uh, liquidy. And there you go. And again, this is something that you're going to want to do two to three times a week. This is also an exfoliator, right? Um, and again, you can you can actually keep this one at room temperature temperature for about two months. And then it kind of looks like cheesy pudding in a way. I don't know if you can like see that. Kind of looks like cheesy pudding. But again, any type of sugar that you want that has texture, so you definitely don't want to do like a um, kind of powdered sugar or anything like that you want to use this to exfoliate. Any questions on this one as I transfer this in here? Is anybody making these at home with me right now? No. Or is I'm just after. Me? Oh, cool. Okay. What's the shelf life for the salt? The salt scrub. This the one we just did before. Yeah, about two months. Okay. Yeah. Everything's about. I would say both of these about two months. And if you want to add color, like the ones that you get from the store, do you put use food coloring or that's one you use the um drying? Wait, hold on one second. I have the water on. Hold on, I just can't hear you very well. One second, I'm just rinsing this out. I'm so sorry, say that again. If you want to add color to make it look real cute, like the ones you get from the store, what would you use? Um, like the a white, like white instead of brown? Like pink or different colors. Um, so pink would be the next, we're gonna do a pink Himalayan salt sea salt okay. bath bomb, but you could do pink Himalayan sea salt instead of the white salt in the salt scrub. Sugar. I feel like it would either be white or brown. I don't really oh, well, know. Geez, like, what about food coloring? I I don't know. I've never tried food coloring because I don't know how that would be with the skin. Yeah, okay. because food coloring has a bunch of different yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could, I mean, you could, I'm trying to think like you could like squeeze a beet ah. to make it red, maybe. Yeah, I know beet is, is yeah, and it, and beet is good for like it, antioxidants and stuff like that's that that's a good idea yeah like you could do that like a lot of like the natural food coloring they just use beets and different like carrots and sweet potatoes and stuff mm -hmm. i just don't know i don't know how that would be with your skin i don't know if the red would stay on your skin yeah. mm. i think you would probably have to use very little very very little yeah like i would just be really mindful about that because if you're gonna try it like do it like maybe on your like Mm -hmm. bottom of your foot or something <laughs> yeah because yeah. that, like, beat, that beat juice stains everything <laughs> yeah all right so we are going to do a face mask right now um we're going to do three ingredients i'm actually going to put this in a Tupperware thing because it's probably going to be easier. Okay. So you want to get full fat, like Greek yogurt. You don't want to get like yogurt that's like blueberry flavored. <laughs> you want to get plain 
yogurt. I mean, I guess you could if you really wanted to smell like fruit, but um, I don't. I don't know if I want to smell like. All right, and then you're gonna add some oats. Clean this off. Tablespoon of oats. These are old fashioned. You can use any oats that you you can you can also use the. Um, steel cut oats too, if you would like. And then you're just gonna put a little, little bit of honey for the moisture, okay? You don't wanna put like a ton of honey. A spoon. And then you're just gonna mix it up. And obviously if you wanna do more than just your face, like if you wanna do your arms and your chest and your neck, then you would just double or like triple the recipe. And then you're gonna put this mask on your face for about 10 minutes. And it's gonna, it's a really nice softening mask. Like it's gonna be really kind of really, hopefully it's gonna give you lots of moisture and your skin's gonna feel very, very soft after doing something like this. Yeah, you wanna leave it on for 10 minutes. And then, I know you, right? It's like, you could eat this too. Like this is definitely like a nice little- like, breakfast. <laughs> Right, smells like breakfast. Um, so then you want to like wash it off with water and then add like um, face moisturizer to to it. Yeah, it does actually smell like breakfast. I'm like, oh, I'm getting real hungry. All right, and now we have one more. Any questions on that one? Everybody always gives me weird looks. Like, you want me to put yogurt on my face? Uh, but yogurt is actually a really nice way to soften and bring lots of moisture to your face but again you want like all that all the ingredients is just yogurt there's nothing else in there you don't want to get like a fancy fancy one now we are making one of my favorite things um some bath salts okay oh i love taking baths i don't get to take baths enough like I used to, but I love when I get a chance to take a bath. Um, I need to get my scissors. All right, so Epsom salt is one of the best things that you can actually do. Um, Epsom salt is full of magnesium and magnesium is the anti-stress mineral. So if you're having a really long day and you're just feeling really overwhelmed, you just putting Epsom salt in the bath with some lavender would be great. Or even doing like a foot soak with the lavender can also be really, really, really nice. So I always have a bag of Epsom salt like under my bathroom sink. And they even sell, it's great for like sore muscles. Um, if you worked out really hard and like you're having like a hard time like recovering. It's awesome. They even sell Epsom salt with um, lavender essential oils already in it. A bag like this is literally $2 at CVS. Okay. But it's really great for aches and pains. So we're we're going to make a big batch of this. So this is three cups of the Epsom salt. And it's like, it's just smell, just the smell of Epsom salt, I feel like is really relaxing too. It has like a very like nice smell to it. Okay. Then we're going to do some pink Himalayan sea salt. Now you definitely have to buy like a bag of the sea salt. You can't just like get a grinder out that would take you forever <laughs> to like get like one and a half cups of the Himalayan sea salt. Okay. <laughs> Somebody told me that once like to ask me that once and I was like, well, no, like that won't work. And again, Himalayan sea salt is also has lots of like natural healing properties too. So we're gonna add that to the mason jar. Then we're gonna do some baking soda, not powder, okay? Soda. All right, I'm doing half a cup of that. Okay. Oops, 
just got that everywhere. And then whatever essential oil you want to add to that too. So um, I always do lavender just because I usually do this after a crazy day and I just want to like hang out in my tub. So just put that on top and then we're going to mix this whole thing up. And then I'm going to add some coconut oil to get some more um, moisture in here too. And I'm just going to mix everything together. This would probably be better actually made in a mixing bowl now that I'm like doing this. That would have been a better idea today. I usually do it in a mixing bowl, but I already had the mason jar in front of me. So you just want to like really get it really mixed. And then what you're going to do is just drop it in the bathtub. So run the bath, have nice and hot water uh, and add this in there. So this should give you about five to 10 baths if you're gonna use these as like the, the uh, bath bombs. So I'm gonna find, I can't, I can't find my covers anywhere. I'm gonna find my cover and I'm gonna shake this up really, really well to kind of get that in there. But this is awesome long stressful day, or if you have any like muscle aches or soreness, like this is one of the best things that you can do to really help with just relaxation. And because you've got the coconut oil in there, you've got the Epsom salt, the Himalayan sea salt, like it's also like a good exfoliator too. So you can kind of like exfoliate a little bit and then like jump in the tub or have a little bit on the side of the tub too. And that's it today. Um, any questions, uh, anything that you, everyone really wants to like try to make at home right away, um, or any questions about anything that we talked about today, please let me know before we say goodbye. Thank you. Was this helpful? Who's going to yes. make some yes, it was. Yes, it was. Definitely going to make some salt. Julia, I hope yes. we expect you to do some at home. Yes, yep. send <laughs> pictures. Yep. Please send photos of all of the homemade things that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. I'm definitely going to try a couple of these things. Definitely. Yeah. And like, probably have, I've had pretty much everything except the yogurt in my house. I just had to like, and I had to buy new salt because I mine was gone, but like most of the stuff I had already. So it's pretty cool because you have all this stuff and you don't have to buy like twenty dollar bath bomb. Um, yeah, there we and go. They're expensive now. <laughs> Very. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and some of them, um, what is it? They put the artificial coloring and stuff like that in, and they leave your, they stain up your tub and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I got my mother one time. And she told me that she left a nice big ring around the tub. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> I know she was not happy when she saw. <laughs> yeah, this is the sugar I was saying, like, don't use something like this, like a powdered, like, cane, like a powdered sugar. You don't want to do something like that. You want, yeah, you, you don't want to use the bunch. You don't want to use the bunch sugar That's for the bunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank um, if you. you have any questions, if you're making them at home, let me know. Um, and send us some pictures. I want to see all of your fun creations. And just enjoy some more self-care, downtime. Just give yourself a few minutes a day just to really fill your cup up. Uh, thank you, everybody. For thank you. Thank you. L Y Elevent. Like we said before, all the recipes are on the chat. If you want to take some of them, you can also look them up on um, on Katie's website. It's Katie Bresick. What is it again? Wellness? Yeah, it's just my name.com. Yeah, just katiebresick.com. Katiebresick.com. It's in the in the chat. Feel free to take as much info as you like. And don't I forget took it to, already. And don't forget to uh, come join us for the other Live Your Life events that are happening throughout the month. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Nice Thank you. Thank you. Be cool, everybody. You too, bye.